So one thing that I think about a lot um, is I think about how we learn. And sometimes that means how we disagree. And um, I was discussing with Austin earlier controversial speakers. And I was, I was telling a group with whom, with which I was meeting last week, that frankly, I don't fear that at Pepperdine. I, as, as long as there's balance, which is really important to me, then I don't mind controversial speakers because I trust that our people are the sorts of people who will disagree without being disagreeable, who will engage in steel sharpening steel, which I really like. And I, I like the phrase most, you know, convicted civility. I, I like the idea that we can have strong convictions and we can still be civil in the process of discussing them. I think that's terribly important, particularly to faith-based institution. But I have to ask you candidly, how do you experience that? How, how do we um, mix with uh, ideas that are different from our own and then emerge stronger from them? One thing I've appreciated about Pepperdine that I think helps us as an institution is our sense of mission. Mm -hmm. I think that helps with convicted civility because you still have sort of a, a co common ground, really. And I was very surprised when I came here how close the professors were with the, with the students, how they really wanted to get to know them as people, and how that was encouraged by the university through mentor programs or other ways. And I feel like that also, when you have a personal relationship with someone, that helps you to discuss things a little more easily. So I guess I would say those two things have helped me here. I think it starts with community, honestly. I think that I look at all of my closest friends now, I would say at least 75 to 80% of them don't agree with me on a lot of political topics or those kind of contentious issues. And that's never been a problem, but it's, it kind of exposes both of us to either question what is it that we are feeling and maybe almost feel uncomfortable in what our beliefs are so that we can understand and kind of either strengthen them or become a little more understanding of the other side. Do you ever find yourself, David, being brought in to mediate a dispute between disparate voices and forces, and I mean, how, do, how do you encourage people to disagree usefully? I think there's a misconception that a person that's responsible for leading this work of diversity and inclusion um, is trying to limit a particular group's speech and give voice to another. Um, I'm just trying to create equitable spaces for everyone to feel free to engage in discourse and dialogue. Um, I think on our campus, um, my job is to help people become comfortable with the uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but I think another thing that's important for us to grapple with is who determines what's civil. Because a lot of times, there are predetermined notions of what civil looks like mm -hmm. for particular groups of people. And therefore, some people feel like they're not heard because they are deemed as being uncivil. So I think that is a great point. And I, I read an article the other day that sort of challenged that notion. From, from my perspective, growing with the Midwest, middle class family, white, to disagree was, was very kind of low key and plain. And, but I think there are other families where it is more vigorous. And that's not less valid. It's just different. And so I think we have to be careful that as we determine what is civil and, and what is useful, that we can't strip out, you know, the emotion and, and the, you know, the significance that the conversation may have for, for any one of us. I remember at one of Pepperdine's table talks about a year or so ago, um, Dr. Davenport uh, made a statement that has stuck with me. He said, when people feel like they're not being heard, they begin to shout. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's so powerful that mm -hmm. if we don't allow space for conversation, um, it, it can lead to people taking the microphone and, and demanding. Uh, an audience, and I thought that was a really just wise uh, and deep statement that he made. In all things, I'd like to think that people have compassion for other viewpoints. Mm -hmm. That even if you disagree vehemently, at least assume good faith and, and have compassion for other viewpoints. How, how would you lead toward that, Dusty? I love what's happening here tonight. I, I think. Um, the breaking of bread has, has spiritual implications, but it's also a community building tool. When you break bread with someone, when you share a meal with them, it creates a space for conversation. Uh, and I think that is critical to, to all of these discussions is, is conversation. And from my perspective, I think the way you do that is you, you try to craft experiences that draw people together and allow them to enter into dialogue. And nothing does that better than a meal.
you follow the controversy at Middlebury and, and Berkeley, where there were factions that really disagreed with one another and really weren't doing much communicating, but really were engaged in you know, very threatening behavior. And when I saw that, I think so much of both institutions, I thought that could happen at Pepperdine, but it can't happen at Pepperdine right, right, right. because this ought to be a place where we love one another, lead with compassion and care. What, how would you advise me as president to prepare a campus community to make sure that something like that can't happen at a place like this, where we do lead with compassion and caring? Oftentimes, people can't really have dialogue about these issues because they feel a lot of weight on their shoulders. And um, I think at Pepperdine, though, the more diversity, the more space we have to have those conversations. And something I've kind of established this year for myself is after having traveled abroad, after having lived in several different countries and coming from different cultures, it's my curiosity. Most people come into college and they're like, this is my view, this is the way it's always going to be, and this is how I've grown up. But you got to realize there are so many different ways of looking at things and I think that's the first step is the accepting that people are different from you mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that's you know you don't matter or someone is less significant than you um, as a storyteller I love you know telling stories but I love hearing stories and that kind of adds to my experience and coming to Pepperdine has just like opened this new door because I can sit down at a table, I can share food with this person, it doesn't mean that I have to develop any hatred, it doesn't mean that I have to you know, um, step away from respect, it's just a matter of wanting to understand it. I mean, we, we all have a story, everyone around this table has a story, right? But um, it really begins with listening, you know, hearing someone else's story and knowing where they've been and, and maybe from that we get a sense of where they're going. I, I just think this conversation makes me uh, hope that others are gracious with me as I learn and it challenges me to be gracious with others as they learn too. Let me stay with that. I, I love the word hope. Uh, for me it's perfectly shaped, hope. Uh, where do you hope that we go from here? I, I think Pepperdine as a university is a, is a lighthouse. Uh, it's an institution physically on, on a hill, <laughs> many hills here, right? If you spend much time walking around and I, I think um, I think we have the potential uh, with the caliber of students that we attract, caliber of staff and, uh, and faculty um, to, to be a model. Um, and I think from my perspective, the best way to be a model is to grant access to those who have not been blessed uh, with certain uh, privileges that you've been granted. Kind and of uh, jumping off what you were saying was, uh, you know, don't feel sorry for our, our privilege, but like we have an opportunity with that. And I hope the you know the next classes to come um, ask themselves, you know, what can I do with my privilege, and continue to evolve in that way. Um, so we're talking to different communities, and we're being uh, more open and uh, to listening and understanding. And I think all of us have our own specific communities, but also using those communities as a, as a vehicle to talk to and and com converse with other communities as well. I often marvel at how much attention Pepperdine gets nationally, perched, relatively small school, perched in these Santa Monica mountains, ranked highly. Uh, and it, it sort of begs the question, David, um, from this opportunity, how shall we lead? And I, I think that God will hold us accountable for how we steward mm -hmm. the privilege that we receive, here, the, the talents that we have, right? Uh, if we use a scriptural reference. I, I think it's our responsibility to use those talents to um, address inequities that prevent access. The entire academic community, um, they're looking for someone to model what discourse looks like, respectful discourse, and what does, how do you incorporate your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion into your research and scholarship? And how do we use that to address the inequities, which is the social justice arm of the gospel? Um, I think that's how we move forward. Um, and as we do that, we'll continue to live in the tension of the uncomfortable, and we won't be perfect, but we'll continue to strive for perfection. That's where we should go. That's how King acts, you know, what, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? And I think that's how we pursue community, by, by doing those things. There, there's lots of conversation about change at a, 
at a large level. Um, but one of the things that I've become convicted of recently is that I can't expect an institution to be something that I'm not. Mm -hmm. And when I look at my five closest friends, is that a diverse community? And if it's not, how can I, how can I argue that an institution should be something that I'm not willing to be? So that's been something for me that has been on my heart of, of recognizing if I really care about this, it, it has to start here, right, like right here in my heart and who I am. So I'm a Posse Scholar and um, as someone who's a part of that, I was thinking of, um, I was thinking of myself freshman year when I came into Pepperdine and I, I remember we used to all stick together and um, it's a great thing to have that community, but um, now I have such a different variety of friends and, and I think What's important is to have someone step on campus and not be afraid to take that step forward. So I want you to stay with that. And if you were giving a message to students mm -hmm. who would someday come to Pepperdine, what would you say? What would you say to embolden them? I would tell them that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and coming mm -hmm. to college is not what most of us imagine it to me. I mean, we all have this, you know, um, predetermined notion of what things are going to look like, what your grades are going to look like, the people you're going to meet are going to look like. No, it's, it's true. It's definitely true. Um, I would tell them to prepare themselves for change, to not be afraid of change, because I think every person goes through change when they go through college, drastically or minorly, but it's, it's bound to happen. So uh, in America, there are 4,300 colleges and universities, lots of choice. There's something for everyone, right? I think Pepperdine's special. And I think Pepperdine uh, is needed in this world. And Austin, I'm going to come to you first. Why does this world need Pepperdine University students? Pepperdine students, Pepperdine alumni, Pepperdine graduate, those are students that there's something different about them. As corny as the purpose, service, and leadership that is instilled, and it's not drilled into anyone, it's something that each student, I would say, strives for and finds on their own, and they're able to exemplify it in their own unique way. But at the end of the day, you can walk out and every Pepperdine student and graduate kind of it takes that with them and carries it with them for the rest of their lives, wherever they go and whatever future careers they may aspire to kind of piggybacking on what you're saying, the, that vocation, um, I think Pepperdine gives like a holistic uh, education. Um, and so that's something I'm, want, I'm going to become a teacher uh, for uh, secondary, middle school, high school for social sciences. But um, in part, that's, yeah, it will be my career, but that's my, my vocation also. And I have uh, had many opportunities to serve um, in leadership roles and in, in talking to different people uh, across different lines here. And I think I can definitely use those skills and, and those opportunities to um, create a great environment for, for kids that I'm educating uh, in the future. God bless you for wanting to be a teacher. I, <laughs> I love that. I did not know that. That pleases me a great deal. OK, my, my friend, um, why, why, why does the world need Pepperdine graduates? I think that. Pepperdine prepares you not only intellectually, but also provides a moral compass, kind of what we've all touched on. And I think that's just so integral in the world today where sometimes that is lacking. And one of my favorite quotes is, what is done in love is done well. And I think at Pepperdine, it, the staff, the faculty, the administration, the students, we love what we're doing and we love each other. And I think that, that that comes across in the graduates and um, as they enter the world, they're able to love others. And I think that's what's most important in life is loving those around you. Um, and so I think that's why we need more Pepperdine graduates because we're spreading love into this world. I, I'm never happier than on commencement day, on graduation day. And I have the privilege of sitting on the stage and eventually shaking hands and passing out diplomas. It's a powerful moment. You think about the precious gift of their life for four years and the chance to um, walk with them and talk with them, pray with them, love them, hopefully make them better. Professor, you're sitting with the faculty. 
and uh, you've got your students walking across the stage. What, what are you thinking about them? What are you hoping? My hope as I see them leaving Pepperdine is that they've really taken advantage of what we have here. And I try to say to them, this is one time in your life where you have such easy access to so many different perspectives and ideas and opportunities. It's a very special time in your life. And I think Pepperdine works very hard to make it special and to realize how fleeting it is and to, to realize how valuable it is. When we come to college or come to Pepperdine, you, you think about your future career as being your one big takeaway from, mm -hmm. uh, from your education. And from my personal experience, I, I think that has been true, but that's actually been a small element of the, the thing that has brought me most joy in life, and that's the relationships, the community, mm -hmm. uh, my deep connections to, to faith, uh, all of those things, I think, bring in this holistic understanding of what it means to live well. Mm -hmm. Uh, that if you, if you land a great job in the career field that you desire, but, but you haven't learned um, what it means to love others and serve others, um, I don't know that we've done a good job with you as a student, if, that, if your only takeaway is that you've got a great degree and a great job. We are definitely not an institution that just churns out graduates. Mm. And, and people know that. And so I think we draw students who want people to invest in them and feel they're worthy of investment. And I think when you keep saying yes to a young person through their formative years and they see that people support them and that they can do things and they're encouraged, I think they do really leave with a feeling that they, they can make a difference. The workplace of the future doesn't need more robots, it needs more critical thinkers. And I think Pepperdine, we foster an environment. Through everything that happens on campus here, I think it's all geared towards conversation. Um, and the, the, the teaching is not giving knowledge, it's, it's exposing students and, and allowing them to engage and respond to, to the content that has been laid out before them. I just want to say that you can come to my home for dinner anytime. <laughs> um, I found this conversation very rich and, and meaningful and indeed affirming and, and what a joy it is to you know work at something every day of my life and be confirmed that it's been a good use of my life. And I, I bless the students who are here for the fact they've come to Pepperdine in the first place and they've made us, changed us for the better and I'm grateful for my staff and faculty colleagues who've committed their lives to coming and changing and shaping Pepperdine, making it better. As Dusty and I were discussing earlier, I rise er very early every morning. I make really good coffee. <laughs> um, if you want to come by at 5 a.m., it's ready. <laughs> and then I sit at that kitchen table and I pray to get ready for the day and to think about opportunities that could come our way during the day. And I pray for you and I pray for faculty and staff and, and pray for students I haven't even met yet because I know the good Lord will bring great students to us for an education. So would you mind if I ended my day with prayer? And could we do it together, maybe join hands? Father, we're so grateful to be in your presence and to be your children. We're grateful that you've given us this, these lives to lead, these opportunities to serve and, and to live lives that are purposeful and meaningful and filled with, with service. We thank you for the food that we've enjoyed tonight. We thank you for the fellowship that we've enjoyed tonight. We thank you for this place called Pepperdine and its unique place in the world. And we pray that it will live out its being in the best possible way that we would change lives, indeed the lives around this table. And you'd give us the, the precious gift of, of more young people to come to us who can benefit fully from this place. We thank you for those who've gone before. We thank you for those who will follow us. We pray that our lives will be filled with meaningful and that we'll make a difference. We thank you for diversity. We thank you for different thoughts and different people and different uh, considerations that make us better and along the way make Pepperdine better, make this a diverse and inclusive and loving place uh, in, all, in all things. Father, we thank you and all this for the one who gathers us together, Jesus Christ, and uh, it's in his name that we pray and together we all said, Amen. Amen.